Good afternoon. We'll be having noon setting, daily prayer, page 296 in the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares in the Lord, and he will sustain you. You will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. To complete the cycle of Psalms, we'll use Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The text for meditation today comes from John chapter 12. This is verses 33 to the first half of 36. Um, so this is immediately after Jesus declares that uh, uh, he has come into the world to die, and the Father in heaven says that he will glorify his name, namely glorifying his name in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, John chapter 12, beginning at verse 33. This Jesus said, signifying what death he would die. The people answered him, We have heard out of the law that the Christ endures forever. So how do you say then that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is that Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have light, lest the darkness come on you. He who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. While you have light, believe on the light so that you may be the children of the light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Jesus uh, finished off his saying with signifying what death he would die. And Jesus said that he would be lifted up. So lifted up from the earth. Um, so lifted up on the cross. And this is similar to how, as Jesus said back in, way, way back in chapter 3, towards even the beginning of his ministry, that this is similar to the bronze serpent that Moses lifted up in the desert so that whoever was afflicted in the desert might actually look at the bronze serpent and survive all the venomous snake bites that were received. So the idea there was that when you look upon the cross, you see the uh, embodiment of that which kills you on the cross, on the, on the stake, and you know that this is in between you and God. So, um, when God looks down upon the people, he does not see them suffering, he sees the snake suffering, and uh, basically the people are alleviated. So when we see Christ on the cross, we see him suffering the effects of sin. So if we look upon Jesus Christ, we see him afflicted, um, and uh, the, the weight of sin, the weight of the sin of the world, borne on his shoulders, and he dies of that. So he dies once for sins, and he does so for the entire world. So when God looks down upon us, um, from heavens down to the earth, Jesus raised between us and God, he sees Jesus Christ being sacrificed for our sins, so we need no longer need to face punishment for these sins, and 
Uh, the death that once would have befallen us is now removed from us because it was completely taken in the person of Christ. So Jesus is signifying what death he would die because he needs to be raised up in uh, between heaven and earth. So uh, the people are confused, which is par for the course when you have anything that comes out of Jesus' mouth, it seems like. Uh, not just in John's Gospel, but in all the Gospels, whenever Jesus is talking, people are, are just plain confused. And usually that, that, well, that even occurs in the disciples until you have Pentecost when they actually start understanding what Jesus is doing. Um, even, for example, earlier in this chapter, when, when the disciples saw Jesus riding on the colt into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, they didn't really grasp the full meaning of these things. As it says here in the note, it's John chapter 12, verse 16. These things his disciples did not understand at first, but when Jesus was glorified, that is, lifted up on the cross, also ascended into heaven, then they remembered that such things were written of him and that people had done such things to him. So, people naturally do not understand everything that happens with Jesus. So, the people who heard Jesus speaking, well, they asked him, well, we, uh, we have heard out of the law, so this is the law of Moses. This is going way back to the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, they heard that the Christ, so the Messiah, endures forever. And this we have readily available in the Old Testament uh, when you're talking about, uh, let's say, even the descendant of David, the, the son of David who will reign forever and ever on the throne of David. So an everlasting Messiah. Uh, also repeated in, say, Ezekiel, where you have uh, the shepherd, the descendant of David, set up as a shepherd of the people forever. Um, and, and the list can go on and on. Basically, if the people have paid attention to the Old Testament, as Jesus Christ hopes that they have paid attention to the Old Testament, then they would realize that the Messiah stays with the people forever. Because Jesus really does hope that everybody understands this, since he's been referencing the Old Testament in has repeatedly said thus far in his ministry that it is written that you may know who I am. So if the people are asking things about the law and asking, well, doesn't the Messiah stay with us forever? Then it's not that they're asking this impiously or against Jesus per se, nor does Jesus really um, take it out on them that, that, oh, you're so ignorant. They're actually asking a genuine question, not trying to be belligerent, but just going, well, what are, what are you saying? Because if Jesus says that he is the one who is lifted up on the cross, then who is actually going to be the Messiah? And that's the second part of this. So they say, we have heard out of the law that the Christ, that is the Messiah, endures forever. So how do you say then that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? So if Jesus is the one who's going to die on the cross, then he will go away. So then who would actually be the one on the cross? Because these people are assuming, much like um, Martha did in the previous chapter, when you have somebody who dies in this world, they will remain dead until the resurrection on the last day. So when, so when uh, Jesus says, to, to, tries to comfort Martha, who's mourning her brother Lazarus, and she's saying uh, that she says, Lord, if you... Had been here he would not have died jesus says don't worry he will rise again she says i know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day but she's putting that far off and jesus is then makes his grand statement about his divinity which is i am the resurrection and the life so that which is proper to the divine nature of, of god is in christ jesus and it took Jesus to, re, uh, to reveal this in order for Martha to understand it. Um, once he says, I am the resurrection and the life, uh, he who believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live. Uh, yes, do you believe this? She says, yes, I do. But it did take a statement from Jesus Christ to confirm the fact. So the people asking this question is not that, again, they're not being impious, they just do not know. So the Son of Man if he's lifted up, they're just assuming, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Jesus, if he's lifted up, they're assuming that he will die and then they will have to wait for another. So Jesus might just be a grand prophet in their eyes rather than uh, the Messiah. 
as the Messiah would have to live beyond death, or, or, or live to unto eternity, which would mean not dying. So uh, Jesus says to them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest the darkness come on you. And so Jesus responds with a bit of a metaphor now. And this is par for the course with Jesus. Well, maybe a little bit more so in the other three Gospels, but Jesus constantly uh, speaks in metaphors or parables when people ask him questions. So he's saying, yet a little while the light is with you. Uh, well, who is the light? Well, that is Jesus Christ. What is Jesus referencing? He's referencing uh, way back at the prologue of John where, where, where he is... He is uh, the word that is the light of the world. From whom the light of the world comes all life. So Jesus was the first in the beginning that when the word was spoken, there was light. And Jesus, being light himself, made sure that in that light was life. So life entered into the universe as soon as the universe was made, uh, beginning on the first day with light. But even before this, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, even other than this, beginning of John chapter 8, Jesus is also giving one of his discourses where he's saying, I am the light which has come into the world. And the rest of chapter 8 is him kind of fleshing that out, talking about how he's bringing people out of the darkness of sin into uh, freedom from sin, being made part of the household of God, and that all those who question him are not of the household of God, but of the household of Satan and the household of lies. So they're living within the darkness of uh, lies and sinfulness and all that. But Jesus Christ, being the light who has come into the world, is now revealing these things to the people. So when the people are asking, well then, who is, who is the Son of Man? Well, Jesus is not exactly answering, saying that I am He, but He's revealing the truth about, well, what is the purpose of the Messiah, the Christ, the, the Son of Man? And saying, yet only a little while the light is with you. And Jesus is saying, walk while you have the light, lest the darkness come upon you. Walk while you have the light refers to living according to Jesus Christ. So, living in faith according to Jesus Christ. And I do not mean that you have to do works. That's not what Jesus is getting at. Walking in the light does not simply mean doing good works. Walking, being in the light, is actually having the light of Jesus Christ, who is the Word made flesh, having Jesus Christ with you, giving you light constantly through faith. So, and Jesus is saying, walk while you have the light. He's saying, live in this world. Have eternal life within you now. And that's the bare meaning of the text. Does, this, does the life of Jesus Christ living within you actually produce good works? Yes. But good works are not the fundamental nature of living in faith. The fundamental, uh, the fundamental aspect of living in faith is actually having the life of Jesus Christ given to you so that you may do good works, may be sanctified, made righteous, and doing that which your neighbor needs. So uh, if you're focusing on the good works, then you kind of have it backwards because the good work com comes out of uh, living in faith. So Jesus is not talking about good works anywhere around here. Uh, the context does not even allow that. He's just basically giving you the gospel that he has. he's dying on the cross for, it, for your forgiveness so that you might actually have life in him. So while you walk in the light, walking Jesus Christ, walk in his life, you are away from darkness. The darkness representing sin means if you're walking in the light of Christ, you are constantly being forgiven in him, not being relegated to the domain of evil, but the domain of Satan, but actually having life in Jesus' name. Um, Jesus also says, He who walks in the darkness not know where he is going. So those who are in the darkness, they do not actually understand that they are, well, let's say on the highway to hell. Just, just use that common phrase. So they do not actually know where they're going. They do not know the straight path. They do not know Jesus. So if they're going somewhere, they have absolutely no idea where they're going. And you can actually find this in a lot of people who are um, I don't know, professing atheism or agnosticism, where you're, 
where you, where you might ask them, well, where do you go when you die? And they, they'll say, I have no idea. If they're more agnostic, if they're more atheist, they say, well, I'm just going to be dead in the dirt, and that's, that's the end of it. But they just do not have that type of understanding of where they're, where they're going. Similar to people of other faiths who are not part of the faith in Jesus Christ, who do not have eternal life with them, but are going somewhere else. Uh, they also have no conception of the eternality of hell and what that means, the ramifications of all this. So those who walk in darkness, they remain in darkness, they remain in darkness until uh, with, with, the, with the final punishment on the last day. But those who are in the light actually know where they're going. They're actually seeing everything clearly through the person of Jesus Christ, and they will come into the presence of God the Father, um, entering into the paradise to come. So, uh, Jesus, in the first half of verse 36. While you have light, believe on the light, so that you may be the children of the light. So while you have the light, while you see Jesus Christ here present within the world, uh, believe on the light so that you may be the children of the light. Jesus Christ dwelling within you now, and believing in him, connecting you to the light of Jesus Christ, that is, the life within the world that he has made, beginning on the first day of creation, and coming to the present, and even going to eternality, you have that in faith, so if you're believing on the light, then you have him, you have Jesus Christ. And you will be children of the light. Now, the difficult thing is, uh, when people, people are asking, well, what do you mean that you're going to die on the cross? Will this mean that the Messiah will pass away from us and we won't see him ever again? Um, who is the Son of Man who remains with us forever. Uh, Jesus, when he's talking about yet a little while the light is with you, he's not saying something to the effect of um, you can only be saved within this brief window of time when I'm actually walking and talking here upon the earth. That's not what Jesus is saying. Nor is he trying to say that um, all people will have eternal life for a very brief period of time while they're alive in this world and then once Jesus ascends to heaven, they won't have that anymore. No, uh, Jesus, when he's talking about his death and resurrection, and when he's talking about the light being within the world for a little bit, uh, he's actually referring to the fact that he is here in ministry on the earth until his ascension, and when he ascends, he's with the Father, and then he sends the Holy Spirit to guide us uh, by his own light. So, the Holy Spirit coming to us sent by Jesus Christ, is guiding us according to the light of Jesus Christ here in this world, but Christ is not with us in the same way he was with the disciples way back during the time uh, of the Gospels. And Jesus has been saying this a couple different times uh, in, in his earlier speeches in the Gospel of John, basically saying uh, something like, you... I am where I am going, you do not know, and you will search for me, but you will not find me. So Something like that. Uh, and when Jesus is saying things like that, he's talking about how he's being glorified on the cross, dying, uh, rising from the grave, and then ascending to God in heaven, and the people will search for him, try to find him here on the earth, um, view him in very worldly terms, but they will not actually find him, because if they're only looking here upon the earth, they will not be able to find him. It's only by way of the Holy Spirit that he will have the life with you, uh, the light of life with you. So Jesus, when he says, well, you have light, believe on the light, so that you may be the children of the light. So if you look at this, kind of expanding that out, saying, well, when do we actually have the light of Jesus Christ with us? Well, we have it when we have faith. So, believe on the light. When Jesus says, believe on the light. Uh, it may not be as obvious, but the same root word in Greek for faith is the verb to, to believe. So, faith and believe are basically the same word in Greek, 
Just one is a noun, one is a verb. So when Jesus is saying, believe on the light, he's saying, uh, well, you have faith in the light. So when do we have faith in the light? When the Holy Spirit brings to us the faith of Jesus Christ so that we may live according to the light of Jesus. So when do we have the light? Every single moment that we are in this world, uh, sustained by God through the Holy Spirit, um, working within us the promises that we have received in baptism, and living out our lives as children of the light. So living out our lives as children of the light, we, um, therein comes the bit of the works. So if we are children of the light, that we may remain children of the light, we try to do good works. We do not reject the source of our good works, we do not re reject Jesus Christ, but we remain in him. Uh, Jesus actually fleshes this out quite well later on in John chapter 15 when he's talking about um, the vine and the branches, that he is the vine, we are the branches, apart from him we can do nothing, so if we are cut off from the vine, well what can branches really do? They don't have anything supplied to them, they can't make good works, so they will just die off there in the soil. But while you are attached to the vine, while branches are attached to the vine, they will bear good fruit, because they they are receiving all the good nutrients from the vine. So in the same way, while we are connected to Jesus Christ by way of the Holy Spirit in faith, we will have uh, the life-sustaining grace given to us by way of the Spirit so that we may live this grace out, which will actually take the form of good works. So we do not receive faith by good works, we do not maintain faith by good works, we actually just do good works because we have received grace. So, while you have the light of Jesus Christ living within you right now, even though Jesus Christ is not necessarily in the same form that he was, uh, in the same way relating to you as he was with the disciples 2,000 years ago, you still have the light of Jesus Christ is with you through faith. So, live as children of the light, that is, Live as those who have been given the grace of God, who are now renewed, made children of the Lord, and have been uh, created, uh, well, newly created, recreated, to do good works. Amen. We continue with the service on page 296 with the curator. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world who entered into the world to give us life. We pray, O Lord, that you sustain us by your life, uh, that we are maintained by the Holy Spirit working faith within us, that we may live in your grace. Please, Lord, be with all the faithful, that they live as children of the light, doing what you have asked us to do, and living in obedience to your word. In your name, O Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms to embrace the world in your death. Grant that all people of the earth may look to you and see their salvation. For your mercy's sake, we pray. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be 